Ladies and gents, welcome back. The fall season is just around the corner, and so are fears of another once in 100 years pandemic. Of course, this is not what the average person is thinking. No, this is what the media is drumming up because fear sells headlines, and that's just how things work. And in the meantime, there are so many people that are trying to justify the behavior that took place during the last one. And <laughs> no one is exempt from this one, including... Well, intellectual powerhouse turned fear monger and, well, potential uh, dictator himself, Sam Harris. And let's get into this. This is what he was saying on a recent podcast. Now, he's been out there advocate, advocating for uh, stronger measures and removing people's rights in the case of, you know, uh, emergency situations, you know, the usual dictator stuff. Uh, but this is what he had to say, doubling down once again in a recent podcast. You know, but dial up the the deadliness of the pathogen. You know, give us something like, you know, airborne Ebola that incubates for a month. You don't you don't know you have it, and you're you walk around spreading it, and it's got, you know, a seventy five percent fatality rate, and it's mostly killing kids. No one gets to make that choice anymore. I mean, then literally He's obviously talking about vaccinations. People wouldn't have the choice to vaccinate under these conditions. If <laughs> again, going back to what what took place in the last one, trying to justify what they did by saying, well, what if it was uh, this, you know, uh, fictional thing that didn't actually happen? Uh, we would have been totally justified in forcing vaccination on people that didn't otherwise want to have it. Literally, the, the cops come in and vaccinate you. And I, I would say that all of us would agree to that the moment, again, that you turn up the lethality uh, uh, on, the, on the pathogen, you turn up the effectiveness of the vaccine, you turn down the risk of the vaccine. Give me a truly safe vaccine where there's not even one documented case of vaccine injury, right? So that, th then you just have to be completely crazy to be worried about being vaccinated in that in that kind of environment. So he's he's giving the the idea that okay, say it was very dangerous. <laughs> say it was very dangerous and the vaccine was there was no risk to it. Why would there be people that wouldn't want to take it? So I mean, we're we're not really in a situation. Not only that, I uh, let people realize that when once they're vaccinated, they the effectiveness uh, protects them. So uh, the only people that would be uh, in harm's way would be the people who chose not to take it in the first place. So again, you're in a situation where you're trying to help people by forcing them to do a thing. This kind of goes against uh, all the tenets of, well, a free, fair and open society. But let's hear him continue. Um, then it's just a no brainer. Then then we just don't tolerate a diversity of opinion because the stakes are too high. It's it's a full on emergency. Bodies of kids are being stacked up in parks, right? We we there's so many of them we don't know what to do with them. We've got these mobile morgues and we have a vaccine that actually works and then we've got RFK Jr saying, you know, maybe maybe you don't want, you know, you, maybe you don't want to get the jab on Rogan's podcast, right? That's that that's the the world I've been worried about ever since COVID. A lot of us are worried about a world where people with opinions like this who say we don't have room for a diversity of thought. We can only have one mono mono <laughs> thought process uh, where people are who want to challenge these ideas are not allowed to do this in a fair and open society. Now, I put in there uh, in the comments here, forgive me if I'm wrong, but th there is a slim chance of a pathogen coming out of nature, if it is has such a high rate of infection and a high fatality rate, it wouldn't survive. Either way, uh, we have rights or we don't. Emergency hypotheticals are thought up by political, <laughs> by potential dictators. And this is essentially where we're at. And people in agreement saying my thought exactly. Super con it's can't be super contagious and super deadly. Uh, but of course, he comes up with the, you know, the the, the thought in there, oh, but there's a, a month-long incubation period. This guy needs to be writing for Hollywood, not actually in academia, thinking up you know, real, real world scenarios. But this, I think the real problem, the crux of the issue here is the number of people out there that actually believe 
not not that there could be another pandemic because that that's a possibility that always will be but that we need to shut down dissent in a fair and open society and this is the real pandemic that's happening around well the world these days here's another character who thought hey this is just uh uh well let's just let him speak for himself if you're a conservative, you're likely 100% against vaccine mandates from the government. You say that government has no rights when it comes to what you put in your body. However, let's do a little thought experiment. What if there- oh, that, Okay, so first off, he just assumes that all conservatives are against vaccines uh, or vaccine mandates. Um, not all conservatives were against the vaccine mandate. So you're, just, you're, you're lumping people into a group that they ought not be lumped into. Uh, just willy-nilly, but let's let's go on to what his point is. There was a virus going around that had a 50% kill rate, meaning it killed five out of 10 people it came into contact with. Okay, so we're already going back into the hypotheticals of, you know, what we did was bad, but what if it was what if it was worse and the scenario justified uh, the bad stuff that we did? This is kind of what he's getting into. And then let's say the U.S. had a vaccine which completely eliminated the risk of dying. Would you, as a conservative, so what if it, there was an effective uh, uh, <laughs> thera therapeutic for it? What if there were th effective therapeutics? Um, would you be totally for it? Would you support it? Support a vaccine mandate. The answer, if you're being intellectually honest, is probably yes. Here's the truth. Conservatives hold to their values in direct inverse proportion to their level of panic. If their level of panic is low, they're consistent. If their level of panic is high, they're incredibly inconsistent. In fact, they start to lean hard into fascist ideas by saying the state should do this, the state should do that, etc. And by the way, they, they lean hard into this. Now, what, what he's actually describing is not uh, a propensity for conservatives. This is a propensity for humans when they're afraid, when they're afraid, when, when fear has been drummed up, that they'll actually comply with things and they'll go along with forcing other people to comply to things. This isn't just a thing from the right. This is the thing of the left. We saw this through the whole pandemic. Uh, all the, the lefties that got drummed up on something that wasn't actually uh, worth being afraid of, in many people's opinions. But Nonetheless, they were very afraid, so they were very happy to force other people to comply with uh, particular health measures that were brought about by the state. By the way, I'm not saying that's necessarily bad. Different problems call for different solutions. All I'm saying is don't pretend to be 100% ideologically consistent all the time because there is always a real world situation, which likely isn't too far fetched, that would cause you to flip on your values in a heartbeat. So for one, he's being intellectually dishonest because he's talking about ideology versus what you would do in a in a in a fear drummed up situation where you you actually and and the the idea here is that people lose their intellectual faculty when they're afraid. And again, it's not a it's not a thing of the left or the right. This is something that could happen on both sides. Now, the the real fears here are the government jumping in and make and taking measures against the public and the real fear the real fears here in Canada are that the government has already poised itself to do so and this is uh, proven just in this video here on June 20th our government will suspend the requirement to be vaccinated in order to board a plane or train in Canada that's that sounds good that so far sounds good they they suspended wait they suspended it Hold on, they did, they're, they're going to relinquish the, 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 the mandates, right? This is what the whole point was. It looks like maybe not. The situation takes a turn for the worse. We are prepared to bring back the policies necessary to protect Canadians. On right. So they always reserve the right to bring back these mandates that were well unilaterally br brought about. They didn't they didn't use uh, the powers that they have in Parliament to to enact new laws or new legislation. No, they used emergency powers. And this is this is the <laughs> this is the tools of despots to use emergency powers to to bring this stuff about. Now, this has happened and this is the way they went. Now, when the legal challenges against them came, they pulled, this is when they suspended it, and then cried mootness to any any uh, lawsuits that came at them, saying that you can't sue us, we're no longer doing it, uh, depriving the, the, the public of any sort of precedent in these cases. Now, 
this is something that's popping up more and more in hospitals around Canada. Uh, vaccine injury support programs are popping up with uh, QR codes where you can get help and get information. Only a year ago, uh, people were told that they were crazy if they if they thought that they had any sort of injuries from it. But Nonetheless, now this is all coming to light, and it's all part of this propaganda machine that has been pushing in this direction. Now, for the sake of keeping this video short, uh, I had a lot of things that I wanted to bring into this, but it looks as though they're drumming things up. They want to get ready for the next one, but I think this is the last bit that I wanted to show uh, just because we were told during the pandemic that well, there wasn't enough services with our hospitals to keep up with it. We didn't have enough hospital beds. We didn't have enough of this. If anything that we should have taken out of this, and if they were serious about any sort of new for future pandemic for the sake of healthcare and not for the sake of util utilizing a, a, an emergency to usurp power, uh, they would have fixed a number of these things. How about by starting by making new hospital beds, putting more beds in the hospitals? No, we don't have that. And here's Yukon Strong with a tweet saying, just went to the hospital to get blood work and blood pressure tested for my heart. Nurse told me they don't have any blood pressure machines and she's waiting for been waiting for three weeks. I mean, don't get sick, people. Seriously, Canada no longer has a functioning healthcare system. And this is where we're at. This is absolutely where we're at. We've pushed so far into this thing. And the only thing that we've gotten out of the uh, out of the pandemic in in terms of implementing new things is more power in the hands of the government and less power for the average citizen. Anyway, let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section down below. Get that conversation started. I know there's a lot of heated debate going on down in the comment section. I uh, love reading what you guys have to say. So leave a comment in the comment section down below and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.